In the heart of farming country in the Netherlands, you'll find the daily routines of agricultural life, the perennial tending of pasture and stock. But here too, you'll find a different kind of farm where it's eels that are nurtured and grown. One and a half million a year, producing legally 250 tons of a national delicacy. We grow them up to uh, market size that's between uh, 130 and uh, 200 grams. And then they are going alive to uh, the smokehouses, mostly in Holland. These eels start life thousands of kilometers away deep in the Sargasso Sea in the Atlantic Ocean. They drift on the Gulf Stream as elvers or glass eels to the estuaries of European rivers. Every year a legal quota is caught for aquaculture to be grown on as adult eels for consumption. But that's where the unscrupulous strike. It's estimated that 300 million glass eels a year are trafficked to Asia. Recent busts have demonstrated the scale of the problem, an illicit trade worth billions. The end result serves smoked to unsuspecting consumers in Japan, China and beyond. They're leaving Europe at a euro each. And one year or so later, grown on in the 900 ponds of China, uh, they, are, they have a tenfold increase in value. So 300 million eels, 300 million euros. One or so years later, that's 3 billion euros. This is the greatest wildlife crime by a mile. Over the centuries, the lakeside town of Volendam was made rich by eel fishing. But with the species now down to an estimated 10% of original totals, the industry has all but disappeared. But Volendam may yet have something to offer the fish that made it famous. It may just be that to break the cycle of illicit trade, you just need to crack the code of the eel's life cycle. Here at a privately funded laboratory, they're trying to find out how to breed the European eel from egg to adult, something that has eluded science to this day. The project here is uh, focused on getting the reproduction of the European eel to make it available for, um, yeah, for humans. So really to, to reproduce the eel in captivity so that we can supply the eel farms with, with glass eel. The problem is replicating precisely what happens in the Sargasso Sea and figuring out what the eel larvae eat. But once that's solved, the wild eel population need never be touched. In the meantime, the focus is on enforcement and international collaboration to take the pressure off this extraordinary species. Nick Clark, Al Jazeera, Volendam, Netherlands.